Um, and thinking about, you know, when you were coming up, whose tour had the best party back in the day? Oh, without a doubt, Chesney. Chesney probably still does. I mean, Chesney just knows how to throw a party. I used to think that the the, the show was actually just a front for the whole party <laughs> was happening. <laughs> over. So, okay, you mentioned this is your 10th album. Would you say there's more ahead of Dirks or behind Dirks album wise? Oh man, that's a great question. I, I mean, quite honestly, there's a lot more behind me than there is ahead of me just because I feel like we've moved in such a, a different world, you know, album wise. I still listen to albums and uh, I still have vinyl and you know, it's so funny. I was, I was texting with a guy, uh, a friend of mine up in Kentucky and he's like, man, my wife and kids are gone. I'm just blasting your music all day in the house. And I was like, yeah, well give me your address. I'll send you a CD. And then you realize like, What's he going to do with the CD? You know, I, I just got my first new car ever, and it doesn't have a CD player in it. It's like, what do, what do, you, even, what do you send people anymore? A link to Apple Music or to Spotify? I don't know how it works anymore. So I don't know, man. I, I think my, my albums are – I think this whole process is changing so rapidly. I'm just so grateful to have 10 albums out there, and I'll always try to make my records – make my music in a way that is a compilation of something. That's just all I'm really interested in. I'm not really interested in just dropping singles, So, but – I don't know. I feel like as far as the albums and records go, uh, you know, I'm lucky. I, I'm glad I have my collection because I don't think they're making a lot more of them. Going back to your first one, what was I thinking? Did anybody else have a chance to record that other than you? No, I wrote that song. I wrote what was I thinking with Brett Beavers and Derek Rattan, and I knew the second we wrote it, it was different and cool and awesome. And I, I grabbed my guitar and I went and found Autumn House, who used to work at Capitol Records. And, uh, I found her outside the exit in and I had my truck and I pulled the tailgate down and she sat on it and I, I got my guitar and sang her that song because I was getting ready to go in the studio uh, the next day. It was like one of the last songs we wrote for the record and uh, she loved it and we cut it and uh, that was 20 years ago. That song was a, was a single April of 20, 2003. So almost uh, coming up on 20 years of what was I thinking? That's crazy. Yeah. Do you, um, it's like according to the Wikipedia story, it's based on like a, a real life story I, that apparently ended with you getting banned from the Grand Ole Opry. Is that true? Wow. I need to read the Wikipedia. I didn't realize the song had its own wiki story, but um, it is true. I did get banned from the Grand Ole Opry. Yes. Uh, I used to work at CMT, which is all in TNN, the national network, uh, old school national. We'll know what, I'm, know what I'm talking about, but uh, we worked right next to the Opry. It was out of Opry land and the building was right next to the Grand Ole Opry. So I would sneak over there on Fridays and Saturdays to watch the Opry before I We'll go down to Lower Broadway and watch more music. Um, and eventually I got a, a letter at my place of, at work saying, hey, we love Dirks, but he can't come to the Opry every single weekend. So <laughs> I knew the only way to solve that was to become a member, which I was uh, lucky enough to do. And I actually got an Opry appearance coming up next week. So pretty excited. I mean, I mean, well, very few people can say that they were, you know, banned from the Opry. What's that process like? Is it there's do you get like an official letter? Uh, yeah, the letter came. I wish I still had a copy of it. It probably back was in the letter days. I email was, was 2000. This has been 2000 ish, you know, 2001, maybe. So I'm not sure what we were doing on the email front there. It might have probably was a proper letter that, that got sent to me. I wish I still had a copy of that from Pete Fisher. Um, so got that letter and I, I, I knew I'd been there a little, probably a little too much, but, uh, it kind of helped me kind of set my sights on, okay, the only way to you know, I need to get the ultimate backstage pass, which is the Grand Ole Opry membership. So that really became a gold mine. It became a, the gold mine became to play the Opry, and that, that, that's what really became my my number one focus. I knew if I got a chance to play the Opry, the record deal, the publishing deal, the song on radio, that all would have had to have happened to uh, play the Opry. So that really was my my main goal. What's on your tour rider? Like, what's something funny? Like, uh, some bands have told me they got pig skins on there and pork rinds, and they didn't even know they were on there. You know, I try, that's right. You, you forget after years of touring, the rider keeps growing, growing, growing. You got I, I make a point, this kind of a nerdy thing, but we print the rider up every year and, and try to cross as much stuff off as we can because we don't want to be the obnoxious people that come in there and make these local runners go grab, you know, organic this and grass fed that and all this crap. So, but I have put whiskey on there. Um, I do feel bad, but I always put like a go for like a really high quality whiskey. They help me complete my collection at home. So, you know, I might, and I, they get it great, if not, no big deal. But yeah, I'm always putting on something interesting on there to see if I can uh, use the rider as a way to kind of complete the uh, the bourbon and, uh, you know, collection at the house. 
And finally, man, I got, man, one of the worst tragedies of the pandemic was the cancellation of the Hot Country Nights tour, man. Yep. I saw that there was something posted of a hint of something. Did Doug and the boys, like, make it through the pandemic? Are they willing to tour again? They are. They did. Uh, they made it through. They've uh, spent a lot of time in their van, cooped up, and they've been hitting me up about getting back out there on the road. Um, but, yeah, they're... <laughs> Just thinking about them, <laughs> I'm allergic to them. I'm allergic to the Hot Country Nights. You say their name, my whole body goes into like just <laughs> it, it, it can't stand them so much. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're gonna come out. I cheap. <laughs> uh, there's talk of them retiring, and uh, every time they, that happens, the the opening whoever's coming out with me on the road always goes, no, they got to come out for one more year. So I think this might be their their. This could be their. They've been doing this for 30 years. This could be their farewell tour. Uh, they're they're thinking it's gonna be as big as the Judd's farewell tour. But I'm I've been trying to tell them like nobody actually knows who you guys are, so don't put your, your hopes set too high. But whatever, man. I, we'll be out on tour with us this year. They got the best swag, man. They got the best free. They got stuff. some good swag. Yeah, they got some good swag for sure.